Thank you all so much for joining me. I'm Willie from the Ozarks, and we're studying A Course in Miracles workbook for students and the text. We're reading from Lesson 285 today on Thursday, October the 12th of 2023. My holiness shines bright and clear today. We're reading from the original edition. Today I wake with joy expecting but the happy things of God to come to me. Are you expecting that? Or are you sending out the signal that you want some kind of tragedy? <laughs> you can do that. You know, we do it unconsciously. My holiness shines bright and clear today. We want to bring what's unconscious into the consciousness, though, and start making new choices. That's why we want to take those quiet times in the morning and in the evening to explore what's in the mind. Be still and quiet and throughout the day, every hour of the day. Try to tell yourself, my holiness shines bright and clear today. Pause for a moment and give thanks to God. Today I wake with joy, expecting but the happy things of God to come to me. I ask but them to come and realize my invitation will be answered by the thoughts to which they have been sent by God me. What thoughts have you sent out? What do you value? What have you, what's your, what you've been asking for? Doesn't matter the words. What do, what do you want? What, what do you truly want? What is valuable to you? To see your brother innocent or to see your brother as getting their just dessert, <laughs> their just due? <clears throat> Remember, the justice of God is innocence. Today I wake with joy, expecting but the happy things of God to come to me. I ask but them to come and realize my invitation will be answered by the thoughts to which they have been sent by me. And I will ask for only joyous things the instant I accept my holiness. And what would be the use of pain to me? What purpose would my suffering fulfill? And how would grief and loss avail me? If insanity departs from me today, and I accept my holiness instead. <laughs> my wholeness, my holiness. Father, my holiness is yours. Let me rejoice in it, and through forgiveness be restored to sanity. Your son is still as you created him. My holiness is part of me and also part of you. And what can alter holiness itself? My holiness shines bright and clear today. What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit mediates between illusions and the truth. As he must bridge the gap between reality and dreams, perception leads to knowledge through the grace that God has given him to be his gift to everyone who turns to him for truth. Across the bridge that he provides are dreams all carried to the truth to be dispelled before the light of knowledge. There are sights and sounds forever laid aside. And where they were perceived before, forgiveness has made possible perception's tranquil end. The goal the Holy Spirit's teaching sets is just this end of dreams. For sights and sounds must be translated from the witnesses of fear to those of love. And when this is entirely accomplished, learning has achieved the only goal it has in truth. For learning as the Holy Spirit guides it to the outcome he perceives for it becomes the means to go beyond itself, to be replaced by the eternal truth. If you but knew how much your father yearns to have you recognize your sinlessness, you would not let his voice appeal in vain nor turn away from his replacement for the fearful images and dreams you made. The Holy Spirit understands the means you made by which you would attain what is forever unattainable. And if you offer them to him, he will employ the means you made for exile 
to restore your mind to where it truly is at home. From knowledge where we from knowledge where he has been placed by God, the Holy Spirit calls to you to let forgiveness rest upon your dreams and be restored to sanity and peace of mind. Without forgiveness will your dreams remain to terrify you, and the memory of all your father's love will not return to signify the end of dreams has come. Accept your father's gift. It is a call from love to love that it be but itself. The Holy Spirit is his gift by which the quietness of heaven is restored to God's beloved Son. Would you refuse to take the function of completing God when all he wills is that you be complete? <laughs> My holiness shines bright and clear today. Okay, we're going to look at our text reading. We're in chapter 29, the awakening, uh, Roman numeral 9. Christ and Antichrist. And while you're turning there, and I would encourage you to follow along. Uh, you know, don't let there be any words that you don't understand. If you don't understand a word, go look it up. Make sure you understand what I'm saying. And if you're not sure what I said, look, re be reading it. I encourage you, if you want to make the quickest possible advance to being an adept, <laughs> to be a miracle worker, to be in peaceful all the time in this world, joyful all the time in this world, well then, be sure you have the book opened a lot. <laughs> That's all I've got to say. Uh, okay, what on earth is going on today? Cookbook launch day. You know, write down your good recipes that you've come up with and share them with others. After you get a bunch of them, put them together on a little book if you want to. Day of the Six Billion, that was actually on October the 12th of 1999 after Audra Mevic was born, uh, and it had to have just been an average because how would you have known for sure, but they considered her or him to be a um, uh, the, the six billionth person. <laughs> uh, so that 1999, I'm not sure where we're at today. Uh, Drink Local Wine Day. Free Thought Day, uh, which was the day that the Salem Witch Trials ended in 1692. It's free Thought Day. International Moment of Frustration Scream Day. Of course, with A Course of Miracles, we're using, well, um, you know, we're, we're, our thoughts are, are becoming more and more free. That's the purpose of them. And we're we're, we're wanting to get to the place where we don't have any built-up frustrations that we need to scream out. <laughs> but if you do, find a safe place where you can do it and not bother anybody. National Farmer's Day. And I'm sat, now I'm sitting here in my, uh, my, my there's this Ford Hook uh, uh, Swiss chard. And here's some, some, um, some rainbow chard. Anyway, I'm sitting in a chard patch that I had, a little circle of about a dozen plants or so, and uh, they, they got eaten up pretty bad by the cabbage moths through the summer, but I, I let them, I just kept them nursing along and didn't pick them any, and they, they, they survived. Picked the moths off as I could, the little worms. But they're, but now the moths are gone and they're, they're doing nice. I've already had a nice big harvest of them a couple of days, yesterday. Spanish Language Day. Old Farmer's Day, uh, that's in a, hall, a festival in Lorango, Louisiana, Old Farmer's Day. National Savings Day, National Gumbo Day, uh, and of course National Farmer's Day, I just said. Uh, World Arthritis Day, which is inflammation of the joints. World Sight Day, attention to blindness and vision impairment. And I said I've got uh, rainbow chard and um, Ford Hook uh, giant Swiss chard out of Seed Savers Exchange. It says of the Ford Hook introduced in 1934 by W. Atley Burpee and Company, this variety has broad, dark green, heavily crumpled leaves with white veins and stalks. Plant grows 28 inches high with two and a half inch wide stalks and produces abundant crops all season, 50 to 60 days. And that is uh, your Ford hook. 
Beta vulgaris is your Swiss chard. And uh, if we sit out here tomorrow, I might tell you a little bit about the rainbow chard. But look at the Swiss chard. Look how beautiful it is. And I just love I I always pick the little small ones. They get eaten too. Pick them around the base and they break right off. And see, they're, they're a little eaten, but not bad. And, but I just break them off around the base and make some, I, I just, I just love steamed Swiss chard. And I put a little bit of it in my salad. Okay, Christ and Antichrist. And be sure to take with us, my holiness shines bright and clear today. What is an idol? Do you think you know? For idols are unrecognized as such and never seen for what they really are. That is the only power which they have. Their purpose is obscure, and they are feared and worshipped both because you do not know what they are for and why they have been made. An idol is an image of your brother, which you would value more than what he is. Okay, let's catch that. This is key point here. Make sure you take this with you. An idol is an image of your brother which you would value more than what he is. Idols are made that he may be replaced no matter what their form. And it is this which never is perceived and recognized, be it a body or a thing, a place, a situation or a circumstance, an object owned or wanted, or a right demanded or achieved, it is the same. 53. Let not their form deceive you. Idols are but substitutes for your reality. In some way you believe they will complete your little self and let you walk in safety in a world perceived as dangerous with forces massed against your confidence and peace of mind. They have the power to supply your lacks and add the value which you do not have. No one believes in idols who has not enslaved himself to littleness and loss. Okay, keep that. It's the, the, the starting point of believing that you are limited and live in a world of lack and death and loss that allows for you to make this distortion of trying to, to see help coming from those around you, and which it does come from around you, but you don't have to... You don't... How do, how do you say this? You don't want to um, to require someone to be a certain way in order for you to be happy. No one believes in idols who has not enslaved himself to littleness and loss, and thus must seek beyond his little self for strength to raise his head and stand apart from all the misery the world reflects. This is the penalty for looking not within for certainty and quiet calm, which liberates you from the world and lets you stand apart in quiet and at peace unlimited. This is the penalty for looking not within for certainty and quiet calm, which liberates you from the world and lets you stand apart in quiet and in peace unlimited. 54. An idol is a false impression of a false belief some form of antichrist which constitutes a gap between the Christ and what you see. An idol is a wish made tangible and given form, and thus perceived as real and seen outside the mind. Yet it is still a thought and cannot leave the mind that is its source, nor is its form apart from the idea it represents. All forms of antichrist oppose the Christ, and fall before his face like a dark veil, which seems to shut you off from him alone in darkness. Yet the light is there. A cloud does not put out the sun. No more a veil can banish what it seems to separate, nor darken by one whit the light itself. <laughs> My holiness shines bright and clear today. And even if someone puts up a veil, to, to, for they can't see who I am. I still shine, and that's true about you and everyone else. There's a part that shines in you that we don't want to, to veil or put a basket over that light. 55. 
The world of idols is a veil across the face of Christ because its purpose is to separate your brother from yourself. A dark and fearful purpose, yet a thought without the power to change one blade of grass from something living to a sign of death. Its form is nowhere, for its source abides within your mind where God abideth not. Where is this place where that is everywhere... Where what okay, where is this place where what is everywhere has been excluded and been kept apart? What hand could be held up to block God's way, whose voice could make demand he enter not? The more than everything is not a thing to make you tremble and to quail in fear. The more than everything can there be more than everything? Yeah, it's an illusion. <laughs> The more than everything is not a thing to make you tremble and to quail in fear. Christ's enemy is nowhere. He can take no form in which he ever will be real. 56. What is an idol? Nothing. It must be believed before it seems to come to life and given power that it may be feared. Its life and power are its believer's gift. And this is what the miracle restores to what has life and power worthy of the gift of heaven and eternal peace. The miracle does not restore the truth. The light the veil between has not put out. The miracle does not restore the truth. The light the veil between has not put out. It merely lifts the veil and lets the truth shine unencumbered being what it is. It does not need belief to be itself, for it has been created, so it is. An idol is established by belief, and when it is withdrawn, the idol dies. <laughs> 57. This is, ant this is the Antichrist, the strange idea there is a power past omnipotence, a place beyond the infinite. A time transcending the eternal. <laughs> this is silly thoughts, aren't they? Here the world of idols has been set by the idea this power and place and time are given form and shape the world where the impossible has happened. Here the deathless come to die. You're the deathless, but you've come to die. <laughs> all in dreams, all in illusions. Here the deathless come to die, the all-encompassing to suffer loss the timeless to be made the slaves of time. Here does the changeless change, the peace of God forever given to all living things. Give way to chaos, and the Son of God, as perfect, sinless, and as loving as his Father, come to hate a little while, to suffer pain, and finally to die. 58. Where is an idol? Nowhere. Can there be a gap in what is infinite, a place where time can interrupt eternity, a place of darkness set where all is light, a dismal alcove separated off from what is endless, has no place to be? An idol is beyond where God has set all things forever and has left no room for anything to be except his will. Nothing and nowhere must an idol be. While God is everything and everywhere, <laughs> I love that, nothing and nowhere must an idol be, while God is everything and everywhere. 59. What purpose has an idol then? What is it for? This is the only question which has many answers, each depending on the one of whom the question has been asked. The world believes in idols. No one comes unless he worshipped them and still attempts to seek for one that yet might offer him a gift reality does not contain. Wow, that's my, my teacher said, everybody has to have a little delusion to come to this world. Well, here's what he's saying here. The world believes in idols. No one comes unless he worshiped them and still attempts to seek for one that yet might offer him a gift reality does not contain. Each, each worshiper of idols harbors hope his special deities will give him more than other men possess. It must be more. It does not really matter more of what, more beauty, more intelligence, more wealth, or even more affliction and more pain. But more of something is an idol for. 
And when one fails, another takes its place with hope of finding more of something else. Be not deceived by forms the something takes. An idol is a means for getting more. And it is this that is against God's will. Because we don't need any more. We have everything. And the last paragraph, 60. God has not many sons, but only one. Who can have more and who be given less? In heaven would the Son of God but laugh if idols could intrude upon his peace. We want to learn to laugh at idols, huh? In heaven would the Son of God but laugh if idols could intrude upon his peace. It is for him the Holy Spirit speaks and tells you idols have no purpose here. For more than heaven can you never have. For more than heaven can you ever have. Or for more than heaven can you never have. If heaven is within, why would you seek for idols which would make the heaven less? To give you more than God bestowed upon your brother and on you as one with him. God gave you all there is, and to be sure you could not lose it, did he also give the same to every living thing as well? And thus is every living thing a part of you as of himself, as of God. No idol can establish you as more than God, but you will never be content with being less. Now catch that. No idol can establish you as more than God, but you will never be content with being less. Okay, in our lesson for today, my holiness shines bright and clear today. Today I wake with joy, expecting but the happy things of God to come to me. I ask but them to come and realize my invitation will be answered by the thoughts to which they have been sent by me. And I will ask for only joyous things the instant I accept my holiness. For what would be the use of pain to me? What purpose would my suffering fulfill? How would grief and loss avail me? If insanity departs from me today, and I accept my holiness instead. My holiness shines bright and clear today. Father, my holiness is yours. Let me rejoice in it, and through forgiveness be restored to sanity. Your son is still as you created him. My holiness is part of me and also part of you. And what can alter holiness itself? My holiness shines bright and clear today. Get my face up there in the cameras. I know how much time we have. Be sure to do your med meditations morning and evening. And throughout the day, tell yourself my holiness shines bright and clear today. 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 What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit mediates between illusions and the truth. He must bridge the gap between reality and dreams. Perception leads to knowledge through the grace that God has given him to be his gift to everyone who turns to him for truth. To be dispelled before the light of knowledge. To be dispelled laid aside and where they were perceived before for 
forgiveness has made possible Perception's tranquil end Forgiveness has made possible Perception's tranquil end Forgiveness has made possible Perception's tranquil end bright and clear today. Your holiness shines bright and clear today. Our eternal holiness shines bright and clear always. My holiness shines bright and clear today. Don't veil it. Don't put a basket over it. Like Jesus said that when one lights a candle, it lights up the whole room. No one puts a basket over it then. Might burn the house down too. But it stops the light was his point. <laughs> Let's don't stop the light. Let your light let this little light of mine shine. Let a little light in you shine. My holiness shines bright and clear today. 